Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the other big time games from this past weekend, including Ashton Jainty just continuing his Heisman campaign. Just remarkable to watch that kid go to work and one of the best running backs I have ever seen. I'll be totally honest with you guys. And then we got a number of other games. We got so many games that we have to get to. Likely we'll get to a couple more tomorrow, maybe at least a couple more, but man, there is so much to get to. But let's start with a game that I really want to talk about here for a second, mainly because these are two teams that came in with two losses. They're likely out of this CFP race, but both these two teams have two losses to really, really good teams. USF lost, obviously, to Miami last week and then Alabama earlier in the year. Tulane lost to Kansas State and OU. Obviously not on the level of USF, but when you beat them 45-10, to 10, you give yourselves a shot. So I'm one of those guys that if Tulane continues to roll this way the rest of the season... I might be trying to bang my chest to get them into the playoff. This is a really, really good team, and Darian Mensa is becoming a star before our eyes. 18 for 22, 326, three touchdowns for the freshman. The trio of wide receivers with Fleming, Williams, Brown, ridiculous. Truly one of the most dangerous trios in the entire country. A tough start for USF has turned into much more. Obviously, it was one of those games or one of those starts to the season that you're thinking. They're going to struggle. There's no two ways about that. They're likely going to lose those two games. But if you can get out of it healthy, if you can get out of it feeling good about yourself, you likely have a lot still in front of you. This was a tough loss. This was one of those losses that you felt like this was the moment that USF could kind of get the train back on the tracks. Oh, excuse me. Get the train back on the tracks and... It did not work by any means. So a huge win for Tulane. I still think they're in the CFP race. I'm still going to beat my chest, hoping that they get into the CFP. But at the end of the day, I think the team that's leading the race right now is the UNLV Rebels. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Malik Williams Jr., or excuse me, Hodge Malik Williams, is absolutely incredible. He went to work in this game, and frankly, I can't imagine what it was like his last week. He probably got the news that he was starting on Wednesday or so, and found a way to get it done. He was absolutely incredible. 13 for 16, 182, three touchdowns through the air, 12 carries, 119 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. If there was anything more he could do, I don't know what it was. It was pretty much anything more would just be washing the jerseys. That was all he had to do that he didn't do on Saturday. And I bet Ricky White is pretty happy that he has a new quarterback. No disrespect to Matthew Sluka, but 11 catches, 127 yards, and two touchdowns speaks for itself, especially after the start to the season that he had. So as of right now, UNLV t- uh, is that team to beat in the CFP race. No two ways about it. Got two big-time wins over Kansas and uh, Houston to start the year. Just took a really good Fresno State team to the woodshed. And they get Syracuse this upcoming Friday. So we'll see what happens there. If they get that win, then they're far and away the team to beat in this race and cannot wait to see this uh, what this team can do with Haj Malik Williams calling or at the controls. And then we had one on Friday that was very, very interesting. One that Rutgers kind of let Washington back in just a little bit. It was a close game at the end of the day, but Washington was able to get back in and give themselves a shot to win this game, and Grady Gross missed. And he missed three in this game, two in the fourth quarter. Really tough loss for him. Definitely one that I'm sure he's wearing really aggressively right now. So hopefully he can get back on the right track. And they got a big one against Michigan, and they are favored in that game this weekend. So we'll get to that one throughout the week, but crazy but Kyle Mondega is an absolute beast 25 carries 132 yards and a score in this one he is what Rutgers is going to be going for him and Sam Jackson are the guys that you are very much going to have to see be absolute beasts if Rutgers is going to keep this up but they're 4-0 and they very much have a path to nine wins they might just have a path to 10 wins honestly this is a very very good team and one of those that isn't going to hand you a lot it's going to be really really tough to just beat this team straight up and especially if Kyle Mondega is going you're probably not going to beat this team straight up And then we got this one. We have to talk about this one here for a second because this team up in Boulder is a little bit different. Um, Now, I still think they have a lot of pitfalls in front of them. I still think they have issues that could be exposed going forward. But they are more talented. They are much tougher. They are much better coached. And frankly, they just show up to these games with a lot more confidence than they did last year. Not to say that they didn't have confidence. Obviously, they did. That is not in short supply by any means up there in Boulder. But at the end of the day... They have more guys now. They have more guys on defense that can make those plays that you very much needed a year ago. And then when you give the ball back to this offense, if you can protect Shadur the way they they did in this game, I believe only two sacks for UCF, you're going to win a lot of games. You're going to win a game that you are not supposed to win. Frankly, you're not, I don't want to say supposed to win, but this is a game that KJ Jefferson is a big time running quarterback that is really hard to tackle against a Colorado team that had their issues tackling in the past. 
and they found a way to get, uh, get it done. Got a number of turnovers from K.J. Jefferson in this offense, and there's a road that is going to get really interesting for Colorado in the Big 12. It does not get easier from here. They have a bye, and then they have Kansas State, I believe, followed by Utah. So it's not going to be easy by any means. But when you talk about the Big 12 right now, there is nothing set in stone. And one thing I can tell you right now, the athletes over there in Boulder are just as good, if not better, than a number of the athletes other places. So a lot of stuff can happen, and Travis Hunter just continues his Heisman run. Really remarkable stuff from this kid, and he is the best player in football. I can say that with absolute confidence at this point. And then we got an Indiana team that is undefeated still. A really, really good game from them. One that was a little bit scary there for a second. It was true back and forth until the fourth quarter, and then Indiana was able to score 21 on an, on an unanswered points excuse me many uh mistakes but did a great job bouncing back a really really good team one of those teams that I think you just got to circle more and more they're really really fun you have a really good quarterback in Curtis Rourke that made a number of mistakes early on in this game but was able to bounce back Elijah Surratt catching balls really impressive this is a good team this is a team that probably won't have much to say in the Big Ten I say that but they don't get Oregon or USC they get Michigan and Ohio State towards the end of the year and with a buy in between If you split those, then you're very much in this conversation. It's a very weird race up there in the Big Ten, and Indiana's a huge reason for that. So Curtis Work obviously did not play his best game. A couple of tough uh, interceptions, especially that first one, and a fumble. Just got to play clean football going forward. Obviously, not an easy thing to fix, but one of those things that they didn't suffer from it earlier in the season, I would be a little bit surprised if it just became a problem in week four. So really impressive, impressive stuff from them, and They stay undefeated up there with a number of other teams that are undefeated that are very confusing right about now. But let's get into this LSU game because this was the performance that they very much needed. They needed one to just kind of cleanse the senses, let them feel a little bit better about themselves, and that's exactly what they got in this one. The offense looked really good. The defense looked better than they have pretty much all year, and this is a South Alabama team that can really score points. I know they're not necessarily physically to the level of LSU, but absolutely. They are a team that can score points on you, and I expected them to score 20, 25 points on this team. They were able to hold them to 10, so huge performance from LSU. Caden Durham, their freshman running back, is an absolute star. Seven carries, 128 yards, and a touchdown rushing. Three catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown through the air. He is everything for this offense right now, and frankly, if you can get a little bit of a run game going with that offense throwing the ball, Man, watch out for the entire rest of the SEC because the reality is that Ole Miss game just became a little bit more attackable, and then you only have Alabama coming up. So this could be a team that makes a little bit of a run in the SEC. I don't know if they're going to make the SEC title, but a lot still on the table for this LSU team. South Alabama is 2-3 and three right now, but man, I still like them in the Sun Belt. I still think this is a very dangerous team and one of those that can absolutely make some noise in that conference. It's going to be an uphill battle. There's no two ways about that, but really impressive uh, team. I think when you have Gio Lopez at quarterback, there's a lot of things you can do that not a lot of other teams in the country can do. So really, really awesome stuff from this team. I think LSU is one of those teams that you're just going to want to watch going forward. I don't know if they're going to be able to put it together the way they need to on defense, but if they can start getting along just a little bit more and they can get that running game going just a little bit more, they're a dangerous team going forward and definitely one that could be in the SEC title at the end of the de- at the end of the year. This was a weird one. This was one that kind of flew a little bit under the radar with all the other craziness happening around. But Duke was trailing twenty to uh, twenty to zero late in the third quarter, and then they just found it. Three drives and uh, interception to end it. Three touchdown drives. That is really remarkable performance from Malik Murphy at least late in this game. And then he had Star Thomas just do incredible stuff in this one. Thirty carries, one hundred sixty six yards, a touchdown. He was everything for this team for a large portion of this game, and frankly, down the stretch of that game, it just looked like UNC was a little bit tired of getting hit by this guy, so really impressive stuff. There's going to be a number of stories coming out of this one. Obviously, the biggest one is going to be what happens with Mac Brown going forward, and I have the same question. I don't really know. I tend to believe it's probably going to be to the end of the year because I do I don't know this, but I feel pretty confident that North Carolina is not going to outright fire Mac Brown. I think they're going to either let him leave and have it be mutual uh, by any means, or he's just going to have to walk out the door at the end of the year. And we'll see what happens there, but a really tough loss, one that you very much needed and one that I know Mac Brown did not want to lose to Manny Diaz. I can say that pretty confidently. So at the end of the day, a ton to figure out for uh, North Carolina, definitely some things that aren't going to be figured out this year, so you'll have to wait a little bit. If you're a North Carolina fan, if you're Duke, you're undefeated. 
you somehow you've gone under the radar and gotten undefeated a lot of ugly wins in there but are undefeated right now head to georgia tech this upcoming weekend if you get that win then maybe this thing becomes a little bit more real i think this is a really interesting team and they're doing just enough to get these wins so more respect to them definitely a huge win for them and one that i know manny diaz badly wanted uh and then we get to the uh, Iowa State team because they're the most consistent commodity in the Big 12 right now. They're the only one that's not up and down on a weekly basis like crazy. They're making a number of big-time plays in this game. And frankly, this one started pretty ugly. Eight straight punts in this game. So not necessarily the great start to this game that we wanted, but it really opened up in the second half. Two long touchdown drives with a field goal in between gave uh, Iowa State a really comfortable edge. And during that time, their defense forced a turnover on downs, a forced fumble, and an interception. So did exactly what you needed them to do, and obviously did with that zero on the board for uh, Houston. And Iowa State is the leader in the clubhouse, in my mind, in the Big 12. I know Kansas State is technically the leader in the odds, but this is the team that's played the most consistent football thus far. And in the Big 12, that might just be what you need as of right now. It just might just be, can you show up every single week and play the same type of football, play the same level of football? And as of right now, Iowa State's doing exactly that. So there's still plenty ahead of them. No two ways about that. I think when you talk about the rest of the season, you do have Utah and KSU at the air, at the end of the season. So you have a little bit of a landing area to figure out all the kinks and then attack those two games with everything you have. But as of right now, Iowa State has a little bit of a buffer that not a lot of the other teams that at least went into the season feeling like they could win the title don't have right now. So they are 1-0 in the conference? I believe 1-0 in the conference, if I'm not mistaken. But a couple other, or they're 2-0 in the conference. But a couple other teams, 2-0 with Texas Tech and Colorado. And then you just got to figure out where you stand. You Definitely a lot in front of them, a couple of big-time games in front of them. But as of right now, if I was picking a team that I feel best about in the Big 12, probably would be Iowa State. I know that sounds a little bit crazy going into the season, but this is a really solid team and definitely doing just exactly what you needed them to do right now. So really crazy uh, conference. When you talk about the Big 12 right now, I don't know if you can say anything with confidence. I said last week that Utah was the uh, number one team in that conference. They get beat the next uh, week. And then I just said it about Iowa State. Maybe they get beat this upcoming weekend. So it's a crazy conference. One of those that we knew was going to be crazy, but I didn't know if it was going to be this crazy. And it very much is. Colorado's got some noise to make. BYU is a team that has become really solid in that conference. I can't get a beat on the Big 12 right now. We'll try to break it down a little bit more simply tomorrow. Try to give you a sense of where every conference stands after everyone's played at least one conference game. But man, it's going to be really, really interesting. And maybe Colorado is that team that can throw a little bit of a wrench into the work. So really remarkable weekend. I mean, when you talk about what college football is, I don't know if it gets any better than what happened in Tuscaloosa on Saturday night. And then you got a number of other really, really good games. You got Colorado just taking UCF to the woodshed. You have a number of other games that were just really, really fun throughout this weekend. Not necessarily a ton that went down to the wire. Obviously, that Kentucky win was very, very uh, hectic towards the end of that game. But overall, really fun week. One of those weekends that reminds you why this sport is the best sport in the uh, in the world. Just absolutely incredible stuff and cannot wait for this upcoming weekend. That is a little bit tempered down just a little bit from uh, this past weekend, but plenty to look forward to. And we will start getting into it tomorrow. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host as always. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference for us. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all the social pages for all the content and updates you could possibly need. We have really incredible people doing awesome work across every single sport you could want. So anything in the world of sports, come on over to GSMC and we have you totally covered. But thank you once again for listening and you guys have a nice day.